about today? Yeah. In case you did not know it, Pentecost means that this is the church's birthday. Yeah. 2,000 plus years ago that the church was birthed according to Acts 2. And when Peter stood out and preached over 3,000 mm -hmm. were converted on that day. Mm -hmm. I want to use for a thought today something very familiar to each and every one of us. I know because of the way you responded last week. Birth, wind, and fire. Yeah. When I announced this last Sunday, many of you began to think about your favorite song. <laughs> and I have heard even up until this morning people's favorite song. I confessed minds to you on last Sunday, and many of your minds went wondering, why is Dr. Robertson interested in reasons? <laughs> and when I studied it, I said, oh Lord, I can't even use any line in that song. <laughs> hey, nothing appropriate about worshiping. You know, I've been <laughs> But there were some songs I believe that we all love in common, like Sing a Song in September. Mm -hmm. Now, I think most of you know by now, if you say something to me, just get ready to be embarrassed. Mm -hmm. So Deacon Stanley said something to me. <laughs> he didn't say anything to me, he sang to me. <laughs> body up, say do you remember body up? I'm jealous because he can sing and you see I couldn't care about it. But as I continue to study this repertoire, thank y'all for your help there. A verse of wind and fire, I did discover some songs, some titles that lent themselves to today's message. Some songs that were not as popular like Fan the Fire. I can feel it in my bones. Mm -hmm. Keep your head to the sky. Yeah. I think Reverend Junkin said today, or was that Reverend Watson? Shining stars, mm -hmm. can't hide love, got to get you into my okay. <laughs> Now you know this group been around a long time. Mm -hmm. There's some songs I had never heard. 
third, like Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. And then another one, devotion. Yeah. You know, but finally, I heard a song, and I said, I heard that one before. I didn't even know it was them. And that song became my prayer for this message today as well as for us in, in, in the entirety of this congregation. Father, open our eyes yes. that we may follow thee. O oh Lord, grant us thy love and peace and let all dissension cease. Mm -hmm. Let our faith each day increase and master, please, open our eyes. Mm -hmm. Now that sets us right where we need to be. Because that puts us, that prayer, that song puts us all on the same playing level. Mm -hmm. There are no big eyes and no little U's in God's kingdom. Come on. None of that exists in the body of Christ. So in the first scripture that was read there, Genesis 2, 7, it says the Lord God formed man, humankind, of the dust of the ground. Mm -hmm of the earth. Yes. That is all we have in common. We share this in common, that we are made of the dust of the earth. I don't care how fine you are. Mm. I don't believe people without me out how fat you are. Mm. I don't care how chiseled you are or how out of shape you are. Mm. We all are made from dirt. This body, this temple, this, this thing that houses our soul and spirit comes from the earth. Flesh, skin and bones, organs and tissues. And that is why when we bury our loved ones, we say from earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Because at the end of the day, that is all we are made of. God took this lump of dirt, formed it and molded it, and now you and I, we look in the mirror and we testify and we say how fearfully and wonderfully. Yes. I mean, I mean, don't, don't get quiet on me now, but some of you know you looked in the mirror this morning. Yeah. You looked at yourself, not at your spouse, you looked at yourself and began to admire the handiwork of God. Amen. Well, let me remind you, young people, y'all listen up at this one. I don't care how strong and strengthened you are today, just keep on living. <laughs> That's why the writer of Ecclesiastes encourages us to remember our Creator in the days of our youth. While the evil days come nigh, or the years draw nigh, when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. Now, I'm not at the stage of a senior yet, but God knows the body that I'm in right now is nowhere near the 21 year old body I used to have. But aren't you glad that we are more than just a physical body? Yeah. 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 When God created humanity, the text says that God breathed into him the breath of life. And that we became a living soul. We have this treasure in earthen vessel. The treasure, beloved, is your soul. That is the eternal part of you that is just like God. Mm -hmm. When Adam sinned, we were all stained with the penalty of sin. And if anybody knows what the penalty of sin is, you know it brings death. Mm -hmm. And death is nothing but separation from God. But thanks be to God that through Christ, according to Ephesians 2, 1, that he has quickened us. That means he has made us alive. We who were dead in our trespasses and sins. Therefore, even in this mortal body, this, this lump of dirt that God has created, there is a soul that is now alive and well because the Holy Spirit has brought us back to life. Remember that in Genesis, God breathed into us and we became a living soul. And sin brought with it a death penalty. But now this soul that was once dead this soul that was once cut off, this, this soul that had no communion with God is now back in fellowship with God because he has brought us back to life. Anyone that is in Christ Jesus is a new creation. Old things have passed away and behold, all things become new. Maybe that's what Paul
Paul meant when he said, although this outward man is perishing, my inward man is being renewed day by day. I said to you a minute ago, the body is not like a 21-year-old, but I'm telling you, I still think the same way today that I did when I was 14 years old. Mm. I don't feel like I've changed at all <laughs> when I look in the mirror. <laughs> but now in this gospel lesson that was read from John, we return to that same chapter that we preached on Easter Sunday. We preached from it on sunrise service. We preach from it at the 1055 service. And then the Sunday after Easter, we came back and preached. And you still been talking about scholars. Mm -hmm. The 20th chapter of the Gospel of John. And here, these disciples who were hiding behind locked doors due to fear, just like Adam and Eve who were hiding mm -hmm. when God came into the garden That's right. and had to ask Adam, where art thou? After Jesus relieved them of their fears, showed them his scars, and he spoke peace to them. It says that he breathed yeah. on them the and said, receive yes. the Holy Spirit. Yes. I don't know if you're catching the connection right now. Yeah. In Genesis, he breathed. Yes. Yes. In this gospel text, he breathed. When, when you breathe on someone, when you breathe into someone, you are giving them a part of yourself. When God made man, God breathed into us. When Christ died and rose again, and we were now having access to the Father through him, that is an indication that he has breathed on us. Breath, wind, and spirit all come from the same root word in Hebrew, which is ruach. Most of the time when we see it, we think of air. But its real interpretation is also air, wind, and spirit. The same word for that in the New Testament is pneuma. And we use it to describe the Holy Spirit. He places his spirit upon us and within us. And that's what the born again experience is all about. When the Holy Spirit draws us to come down the aisle, give our life to Christ, and we receive God, we receive His Spirit. I need a little help because y'all don't seem to understand. So Nicodemus helped me out here. Nicodemus said, I came to Jesus by night. And I told him, what is it that you have? What can I do? And Jesus said to me, you must be born again. And I was so intelligent and so intellectual. I said, Jesus, how can I be born again when I'm old? How can I enter into my mother's womb the second time? Mm -hmm. Jesus told me that which is born of the flesh is flesh. But that which is born of the spirit is spirit. And then he went on to tell me that the wind bloweth yes. where it wills. And thou can hear the sound thereof, but you cannot tell from whence it comes and whither it goeth. So it is the Spirit of God. Those of us who have been born again, we cannot necessarily pinpoint the exact date or time. Now some of you can say, I remember giving my life to Jesus, but if you be honest with me right now, you know as much as you gave me your life on so and so day, you've been changing ever since. Mm -hmm. well, I'm right. not the only one that did not have a history That's of right. Yeah. Uh, I've had to grow into this about this wind is powerful because when you go back to Genesis it says that the spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the world this mm -hmm. spirit, this wind began to and that same time when God created the world is the same wind that is blowing on our lives mm -hmm. that's creating a new you and a new me we who were dead in our sins God has now revived us he has actually resuscitated us how many of you have done the training for the Red Cross? Mm -hmm. Someone stop breathing. Yeah. Yeah. What do you got to do? You got to breathe life back into you. Yeah. Yeah. That's and that's what it was when you and I were sinners. He had to breathe life back into us. The wind of the Lord blew in our lives yeah. and brought us back to life. Yeah. And now we find ourselves saying, breathe on me. Oh, breath of God, fill me with life anew. Let me call those anonymous.
another witness. Some of y'all don't like Nicodemus. Y'all went to see that movie. Nicodemus was a funny character in the movie, Son of God. Mm. But I'm going to go back to the Old Testament and call on Ezekiel. Mm -hmm. Ezekiel tells us that the hand of the <laughs> Lord was upon him. And that the hand of the Lord carried him out into the spirit and set him down in the midst of a valley that was filled with dry bones. Mm -hmm. And the Spirit said to him, Son of man, can these bones live? And I like Ezekiel's response because he didn't try to take it for granted that he knew. He said, Lord, thou knowest. Mm -hmm. Then the Spirit of God spoke to him and said, Prophesy to these bones. Hear the word of the Lord. Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you and you shall live. Ezekiel goes on to tell us that I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. Mm. And behold, a shaking took place. And the bones came together, bone yes. to bone. Mm. And Ezekiel did prophesy to the wind and said, when he prophesied to the wind began to come from the four corners of the earth and it breathed new life into these bones. Mm. Beloved, can I tell you, prophesying is nothing but preaching. Mm -hmm. I feel like he's in you right now. <laughs> now, I'm not calling you a valley of dry bone. Don't nobody go out and say it. But I am saying, Grace, that we do need the Holy Spirit to breathe on us. Yeah. Holy Spirit, have your way in this place. Holy Spirit, have your way. Because this is the house of God. Yeah. And you and I, we are the body of Christ. And so what I'm doing is I am prophesying to the bones that we come together, bone to bone, member to member, because we are one Amen. in the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. Breathe on us, breath of God. Until our hearts are pure, until we are in one with thee to do our master's will. Breathe on us, Holy Spirit, until we are holy thine, till all the earthly parts of us now glow with thy fire divine. Mm -hmm. Grace, we need a fresh wind of the Lord. Mm -hmm. We need the wind of the Holy Spirit to stir us up in this place, to send a revival. And, and I'm not telling us to wait to October for the fall annual revival. But I'm talking about a revival that stirs us up. The kind of revival that causes us to love one another. To speak well of one another. To lift up one another. To pray for one another. We need the Holy Spirit to move in us and among us. So much so that when we testify. Now, y'all who know me, especially those who've been in my class, know that I love him. And we need the kind of touch from God like Lucy Campbell pinned yeah, yeah. when she said there's something within yeah. that holdeth the reins. That there's something within that banishes the pain. There is something within I cannot explain, but all that I know that there is something within. So I have a question for you. Have you that something within? That burning desire, have you that something within that never does tire? Oh, if you have that heavenly fire, then let the world know that there is something within. <laughs> Beloved people, when they see us, they need to see a different us. They need to see a new us. And so when you allow the Holy Spirit to enter in, to cover you and to saturate you, you will be able to testify like Lucy Campbell. When I would do wrong, mm. when I would speak back, when, when I would give people a peace of my mind. Y'all will say mm. of my mind. Okay. There's something within mm. that holds its direct. Mm. And that's earth. Wind. And you and I, we are the earth. God's Holy Spirit is the wind. And I'm here to tell you the results will bring fire. Amen. This text tells us over in Acts 2 that when the day of Pentecost was fully come, yes, yes. they were all in one accord in one place. Yes. Can you imagine all the earth, each one of us in one accord? We're already in 
one place but on one accord. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the house. And there appeared unto them divided tongues as it were of fire. And it set upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Oh, I wish somebody would just catch on fire. Yeah. <laughs> I, I wish somebody would catch on fire. And what is the reason for fire? Fire brings warmth. Yeah. Fire brings light. Yeah. Did you know for you to have a good fire, and I'm sure True 358 can help me out right here, that you need some air? Yeah. You need some wind? Yes, you, you can suffocate a fire yeah. with the lack of wind. Yes, you can. Fire needs wind. And just like Adam, who was made in God's image, likewise, beloved, when you and I gave our hearts to Christ, when you and I received what we call the born again experience, we then begin to be fashioned and to be molded into the image of Christ Jesus. Oh, you may not look like it right now. You may not sometimes act like it right now. But when God sees you, he sees you through the lenses of Jesus. You are an adopted child. He is forming you because of the wind that is blowing in your life. I recognize, beloved, that life begins at conception here and now. We don't have to wait nine months to say life is there. Life is already there when the baby is conceived. But the truth be told, we still wait until that baby is born. We wait until that physician slap that bottle so we can hear some noise mm. and say, this a baby is alive and well. Yeah. And so all I'm trying to say to you is that when you receive a born-again experience, that the Spirit of God moves upon your soul and spirit so much that just like fire, you will respond. Yes. Because nobody can just sit on fire. Mm. I know I said this last week, so I gotta make this clear. I'm not talking about running around the church, but I'm talking about that the fire of God is so much in your soul that it begins to change you from the old you into the new you. You now have spiritual senses. You see now with spiritual eyes and, and you hear with spiritual ears. The Bible is no longer just a book to you. But it is a lamp unto your feet and a light to your path. Preaching is not just a good speech. Hearing gospel music is not just good genre of music to you. But the words of the song are the words of life. They are the words of God. That is because when you and I hear good preaching, and when we hear God speaking through God's word, Maybe through preaching, maybe through teaching, maybe even through singing or testimony, we experience what the disciples experience when they're on the road of Emmaus. On that road of Emmaus, these disciples who had just lost their Savior, they were despondent. Their heads were low. They thought life was over. And then their eyes were open. And that's what the fire is all about. It illuminates you. And they were able to say, did not our hearts burn? While he talked to us by the way, and while he opened to us the scriptures, all I'm trying to say to you, beloved, is that you and I are living epistles. Amen. Since fire brings light, there are people who will never read their Bibles like you and I do. Mm -hmm. Many of you come to the Institute and you learn God's word. Many of you read your Bibles every morning, and if not your Bible, you at least take out the daily devotion and get one scripture in. Mm -hmm. And so we are constantly reading God's word that illumines us, that lightens our path. But there are people all around us in this dark world that will never read their Bibles. But you and I are living epistles, and that's why you got to let your light so shine that others can see your good works. The Bible says that you and I are the light of the world, that we are a city that is set on a hill, and you do not light a candle and then put it down under a bush. But you take that light and you set it on a candlestick so others can be illuminated. And when they see your good works, 
when they see you holding your peace in the midst of a storm, when they see you calm even in the midst of raging out circumstances that are going all around you, they'll want to know what is that within you. And you can say that it is the fire of the Holy Spirit. Yeah.
But then there's someone that under the sound of my voice, you've never experienced the love of Jesus. You do not know what it's like to have this fire that burns within. Let him touch you right now. Give your heart to Christ. What a wonderful opportunity to join the church on the church's birthday. On this Pentecost Sunday, when he has sent the confidence that draws men and women to him. The doors of the church are open to you now. He touched me and made me whole.